In today's video, we will be learning about motion graphs. Under this, the first topic we will learn is about the relationship between displacement time, velocity time and acceleration time graphs. Here we have three graphs, the displacement time, the velocity time and the acceleration time. The gradient of the displacement time graph will give us the velocity and the gradient of the velocity time graph will give us the acceleration. The area under the acceleration time graph will give and the area under the velocity time graph will give us the displacement. Next thing is that we should identify the change in direction through graphs. Now let's say we have two graphs one is displacement time the other is velocity time here if we give some random values to these points the next thing we should know is to identify the change in direction through graphs now we have two graphs the first one is a displacement time graph and the second one is a velocity time graph I have given some random values so that it is easy to understand. Now uh, when time is equal to zero the displacement is zero that is the object is at point O and then from O to A the, uh, the displacement increases. Let's say this direction is the vector positive direction in the vector positive direction the displacement will increase and at point A the car will be at A and then after that the displacement gradually decreases so displacement is always measured from uh, the initial position so uh, the distance or the displacement keeps decreasing with time that means the object is coming back to its initial position then at B the object is at its initial position and then after B the displacement is negative that is the object will pass the initial position and go back to C have the velocity time graph here from O to E when time is equal to 0 the velocity is equal to 0 let's say the object is at O from O to E there is an acceleration so the object will move from O to E and then there is a deceleration but the velocity is still positive therefore it will move to F now here there is an acceleration and here there is a deceleration and at F the velocity becomes 0 and then after F uh, from F to G the velocity is negative so it will move in the opposite direction now this is the vector positive direction it will move in the opposite direction that is from F to G so in displacement time graphs the object will always change the motion direction at points like A In velocity time uh, graphs, the object will change its direction at points like F. The next thing we should know is to how to draw VT graphs using ST graphs. The first graph is a displacement time graph and the second one is the corresponding velocity time graph. The third one is the displacement time graph and the fourth one is the corresponding velocity time graph now if we get a gradient in the first graph we can see that the gradient increases 
therefore the velocity increases now below the time axis the gradient still increases but it increases in the negative direction similarly in the second graph the gradient will decrease but in the positive direction so the velocity is in the positive direction and it is decreasing and in the region below the time axis the gradient still decreases therefore the velocity will decrease but in the negative direction that let's move on to this example here we have a ST graph and we should draw the VT and AT graph corresponding to the given graph. In the first stage we have something like this that is corresponding to this section and the corresponding velocity time is a straight line uh, which is inclined to the horizontal so let's draw that then in the second section we have a constant straight line and there is a fixed gradient here so the velocity time is a horizontal line and then finally we have a curve in which the gradient will decrease that is something like this and the corresponding Velocity time is this. Now in order to draw the acceleration time, we should get the gradient of the velocity time graph. So here, there is a gradient. So let's draw a straight line. And then in the second section, the gradient is zero as the line is horizontal. And in the third section, there is a negative gradient so something like this so this is how you draw the VT and AT graphs using this KCKP method we call this the KCKP method let's try this question using a VT graph a stone which is at rest is released from the top of a building okay so here since this is a free falling object the acceleration is a constant so tan alpha is g that is 10 meters per square second and then they have ask uh, the distance traveled in 5 seconds so here it is 5 and let's say the corresponding velocity is v1 and then using the tan ratio v1 of 5 is equal to tan alpha and that is equal to 10 so v1 will be 50 meters per second and then displacement is given by the area let's say this is o a b area o a b and then we have the base 5 area is equal to half into base into height and the base is 5 and the height is v1 that is 50 so we get the answer 125 now let's move on to the second question we have to find the velocity when the distance traveled is 20 meters so let's say the area OCD is equal to 20 meters and then OD is the time taken and that is T and the velocity is V2 and we should find V2 here we can get an equation using the tan ratio that is v2 over t and that will be equal to 10 so v2 is equal to 10t that is the first equation 
and then we can use the area half into t into v2 is equal to 20 so v2 t will be 40 and there is a second equation and we can substitute the first equation in the second equation then we get 10 t square is equal to 40 t square will be 4 uh, and t is 2 because t is a positive value in the third part we should find the time taken to travel a distance of 45 meters and then if we can extend this let's say this is e and this is f and the velocity is v3 and the total time is t1 let's build up the first equation now this is the third question tan alpha is equal to v3 over t1 and that is equal to 10 meters per square second so v3 is equal to 10 t1 that is the third equation and using area area you can build another equation the area will be 45 and the base let's say it is t1 and the height is v3 so we have to find t1 here so let's substitute the third equation and if we simplify we get t1 square is equal to 9 that is t1 will be 3 seconds